Morning everyone. I'm currently in the Kruger National Park and in this video I'm going to show you how I take my wildlife photographs. I will show you what camera gear I use, what camera settings I use, I'll talk about composition, all depending on what we find. I will share some tips and tricks along the way and the bush has lots of bugs at the moment but the bush is very thick, it's the middle of summer so the sightings will probably be quite difficult to come by but I'm here for six days, so over the next six days, I'll share with you more of a behind the scenes look at how I take my wildlife photographs. So I'm currently sitting with a battle lure perched on a branch. It's not the greatest of scenes, but uh, it's a good example of what I would do in this situation. I'm going to keep my shutter speed quite low and basically what I'm doing is I'm using manual mode in the camera. I'm choosing my aperture and I'm choosing my shutter speed and I'm using auto ISO. So now the camera is going to choose the appropriate ISO speed to capture the exposure that I want. So because the subject is static, I'm going to use a shutter speed of about 250th of a second at f6.3. Now the camera is using ISO 400 and because it's against a very bright sky, I'm going to use my exposure compensation to about plus one. Just to increase that exposure because the camera's meter is going to try and average out that exposure. And because the sky is bright, you want to keep it bright. Now I'm using subject tracking on my Nikon Z8. So you can see it's picking up the eye of the bird there. Just fire off a couple of frames. If you don't have subject tracking on your camera, I would use a single point autofocus here and place it as close to the eye as possible. You want the eye to be in focus as much as you can. That's the most important part of your subject to get in focus. And now I'm waiting for the bird also to look sort of in my general direction. And we have a hyena walking right here. Let me see if I can get a couple of frames quickly. So again, I'm using subject tracking, taking a couple of shots. That was quite lucky. So it just shows you, you should always be prepared to shoot whatever comes your way. So now I've got my camera set to 20 frames per second. I don't need 20 frames per second, but what I would suggest you do is rather keep it in the fastest frames per second that you can, just in case something exciting happens, another bird comes to the perch or it takes off. The image turned out okay, but I prefer this image captured just a few minutes later. I used the exact same camera settings as discussed a few moments ago, and I processed this image with a very bright sky, which I feel allows the texture and the color of the bird to come through nicely. I've just bumped into two cheetah on the hunt. They're busy stalking some impala. So basically I'm driving around now ready for action. I'm sure nothing's gonna happen. That's just how luck goes. But I've got my camera set up at at least one one thousandth of a second at the moment, f6.3. It's still fairly dark because it's very overcast. So my ISO is very high at the moment, but I would rather capture a sharp image of some good action with a very noisy ISO instead of getting a low ISO with motion blur. I've got my focus set to subject detection. Although I might switch that to single point autofocus. There's a lot of high grass here, so the subject detection might struggle a little bit. So I'll just switch it to single point. And I can hear some baboons alarm calling now as well. The cheetah must be close by there. Sadly, the cheetah moved off. They crossed the Sweeney River and I lost sight of them. However, I did bump into two male lion a little bit later on that day. They had a kill, they had their fair share of the meal and they were lying flat. But I did stay with them to see if anything would happen. So the lion keeps sitting up and I think there's something taking his interest. It might just be another vehicle approaching at the moment. Could be something a little bit more interesting than that. But just to show you my camera settings, I'm at one two hundredth of a second. I've got my image stabilization on, so you can see how nice and stable the camera is. At f6.3, because I'm zoomed out all the way to 600, and I'm just using my single point autofocus, just to get focus on the eye there. I can use subject tracking, but I sometimes feel like when the animals side on, sometimes the single point works the quickest and easiest. So you're just turning around, taking a couple of shots, and you can see the auto ISO now, has chosen 560 for my exposure. My exposure compensation is at zero. If the line gets up now and walks, I'll bump my shutter speed up to about 800 of a second. 
and then I'll use the subject tracking to track him, hopefully when he walks closer. The lion did get up after about 30 minutes of waiting. He sat up and I captured this image and I liked the black and white rendition of it. He walked around looking to see what he could find and I took this image of him walking towards me with some very nice backlighting. As you can see, I placed the lion on the left hand third intersecting with the top vertical third giving space on the right hand side for the lion to look into. I've got a fish eagle here on a tree. The light's not great, but I thought it's a good time to talk about how I would take a taking off shot. So I've got my subject tracking on here, as you can see, and I'm switching to 3D tracking, and then it's gonna track the bird as it takes off. I've got my shutter speed at one, two and a half thousandth of a second. I've overexposed by 1.7 stops because of the bright sky. So now I'm just sitting here waiting for the bird to take off. Hopefully he does. Let's fire off a couple of frames there. So what you want to do is leave a lot of space for the bird to take off. And because the wind is going basically into his face, he should take off towards the wind direction. I've got 20 frames per second engaged, and that should be good enough to capture a lot of change in the wings as he takes off. Patience is the game here. Could take a couple of minutes, could take 20 minutes, you never know. So now I've got focus engaged. I've got my 3D tracking engaged, and I've got my finger on the shutter button ready to fire. So now it's just about anticipating that action, or reacting to the action, and capturing the images. I sat with the eagle for about 30 minutes, and he did not move. Later that day, I went down the S100, and I managed to capture this woodland kingfisher in flight. I've been dreaming of a shot like this for a long time, and I used the exact same settings as previously mentioned with the fish eagle. A very fast shutter speed kept the bird nice and sharp and the anticipation of the action was key in capturing this image. Morning everyone, it's a new day and we have quite heavy fog this morning which is very interesting. It's not a very common occurrence here in the Kruger. I have had good fog here before, the fog was very low and the sun was actually poking through a little bit so it offered some really nice photo opportunities and it really gets you thinking about minimalism as composition ideas. You can isolate a lot of things with, with some fog so that's what I'm hoping to find along the way this morning. I did find an elephant on the way to the Timbavati picnic spot. My main focus for the image was making sure the shutter speed was fast enough to make sure there was no motion blur. The image was very simple to take and I really love the atmosphere in this one. I've just come across a bird of prey sat in a dead tree in this thick fog. The tree is very narrow so I'm going for a vertical composition. So as you can see on the screen here, that is basically what I'm dealing with here. So I would not shoot wide, there's too many distractions. I want to go for a very minimal composition. So I'm going to zoom in. Either at about 500 mils for that effect, but I feel like there's still too much distraction at the bottom. So I'm going to zoom in even more, and I might even crop this just to eliminate that bottom branch there. So this is a very simple exposure. I'm going to go for about one two hundredth of a second. I'm resting on a beanbag here, so it's not a high action sequence. So now I'm waiting for the bird. You can see the bird there, he's probably facing towards me. I want him to look to the side. So you can see more of the profile of the bird. I'm going to Overexposed just a little bit, one, one and a third there. The light is very gray at the moment, so it's very flat, but I like this minimal effect and the soft appearance of the tree and the bird. So I'll wait for that bird to just turn to the side so I can see more of its beak. Let's just zoom in. So you can see he's looking to the side now. I think I would prefer him to look to the right hand side just so he's looking into the composition. I feel like if he's looking to the left, it's not working as well as I want to. So I'm just going to sit and wait for him to look to the right. If he's looking to the left, I feel like he's not looking into any space and the composition feels a bit unbalanced. So there we go, he's looking to the right. I'll grab the image. It's a very simple image, but I like the graphic shape of the tree with the bird sitting on top. The image is more about the shape of the tree than it is the bird but the bird adds a nice bit of context to the image. I love the soft appearance in the fog and really enjoy photography in these conditions. I'm busy photographing some hornbills at the moment. There's a nest in a tree very close to where I am, so they would go out, 
get some insects, come back, feed their young. So there's a bit of a pattern happening here. So what I'm actually doing is I am sitting about 10 meters from the nest and the birds are flying out and coming back with food. So what I'm doing is I'm pre-focusing roughly where I want the bird to be photographed at, the distance that I want it to be photographed. And I'm doing that just with my single point autofocus, setting a distance, a rough distance. And when they're coming in, I'm waiting for the birds to fall into that rough depth of field. And then with subject tracking, I'm shooting them coming towards me. So it's a bit tricky, but with a bit of practice, it can work nicely. I'm using one two thousand five hundredth of a second f6.3, currently at about ISO, it's quite high, 8,000. It's very dark at the moment, but I'm going for that fast shutter speed. I want to freeze the wing movements. And the hornball's now has just flown out the nest again. And we'll see if we can get him coming back to the nest here. He's just perched on a tree now. There he goes. And it's actually getting a little bit brighter. So my ISO now is going to drop probably to, uh, you can see there, one four thousandth. Here he comes. Okay, that wasn't good. I wasn't paying much attention. But let's see what we got there. Okay, yeah, those are super sharp, but the background is not so great. It's just bright sky. So I missed, I missed that one. Not paying attention, but you can see it's super sharp. That tracking on the Z8 is just insane. And with the 45 megapixels, you can crop in quite a bit. So you can see that's actually not too bad. So I've just stopped for some coffee. The morning's been fairly quiet. And I wanted to take this opportunity to explain why I use manual mode with full auto ISO. So basically I want control over my aperture and my shutter speed. And the ISO doesn't really matter. Obviously if it's dark, the ISO is going to be quite high. But I like control over the shutter speed, especially of what, I, what I'm photographing. So I normally leave my camera uh, set to a very wide aperture. I don't really change the aperture that much. So on my 180 to 600, the maximum aperture at 600 millimeters is 6.3. So I generally shoot wide open as much as possible. And then I rock the shutter speed up and down depending on the subject that I'm shooting. So for an example, if I'm shooting a line that is sitting completely still, I'll use a shutter speed of about 1 200th of a second. But if that line starts moving, I might bump it up to 1 500th, 1 800th of a second around about there. And then if I'm shooting birds, that's when I'll rock the shutter speed up a lot higher maybe to one two thousand five hundredth of a second or maybe even higher if there's good light i'll probably put it to maybe one three thousand two hundred or even one four thousandth of a second so you want the subject to be captured as sharp as possible and that's why i then can change that shutter speed based on what i'm shooting my idea with that whole thing is to use the lowest shutter speed possible to get the best image quality possible by lowering that iso as much as possible but I won't sacrifice image sharpness. So with the new lenses now, the image stabilization is very good. So if the subject is static, I'll rely on that image stabilization to drop the shutter speed and still get that decent sharpness. But the image stabilization won't work in freezing a subject. So if you're shooting a bird, obviously then it's not going to work. So normally when I'm shooting a, a very fast subject, I will t turn that image stabilization off just to give the camera less to do. So, yeah, as a general rule of thumb, when I'm driving around, if I haven't got a subject in mind yet, I'll normally, depending on the light levels, leave the camera maybe at one one thousandth, because if I, in a split second, find something and I have to literally pick the camera up and fire off a photograph, at least I've got something fairly good that will capture most scenarios. If there's a cheetah running or a, a bird in flight, then I'll ramp that exposure up. So. While I'm driving around, I normally leave the camera to sit at about one thousandth of a second. If it's early morning, I'll leave it at maybe one four hundredth because then the, it's too dark to get a decent exposure anyway. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's in a nutshell of what I do. And then I will leave the camera, as mentioned earlier, in the fastest frames per second possible, just in case there's some action and I need to capture as many images as I, as I can. Part of what makes a good photograph is the lighting. So check out this video next where I discuss everything you need to know about light in wildlife photography.